It is about 16 before the hour of 8 o'clock. It's 744 at Magic 103 WMGK in Philadelphia. Always nice to see live bodies, warm, breathing people in the studio at any hour of the day, and especially at this hour. It's certainly a, it's, it's not uh, the usual fare. Most people uh, flat out refuse. Obviously, James, you didn't have enough sense to turn us down. James <laughs> Darren is with us here this morning. Hello there. Good morning. I don't know if I'm breathing yet, though. <laughs> I can't tell. It was interesting when I left the house. It was dark. It was really, I mean, it was dark. I, I turned the like lights. Like that's unusual? Or <laughs> well, I mean, it's unusual. I don't know. It just didn't seem, it didn't seem kind of, it seemed kind Does, of strange. And doesn't it seem not right somehow? Somehow it seemed really not right. Wow. There, there was one other guy walking to work. I felt, so I felt th that I was doing the right thing. You know, when we were talking about this just the other day, when we come into work. Oh, well, he had a lunch pail. Right? Yeah, right. When we come into work, we look at the houses. We're driving, I mean, Julie and I are driving on the road around quarter five, five. We look at the houses to see if any other light are on uh -huh. and of course there are no other lights on and you yeah but if, if you do see a light on you go yeah somebody else is up you, you, yeah. know, you want to feel it, it really is a good feeling i mean i love to see but when i left my house this morning i said and i really saw this guy with a lunch pail what a lunch pail this guy looked like he had a big samsonite bag i mean yeah. i thought he was gonna eat for like three months yeah. but he had this you know those big white uh, styrofoam things yeah and right i, I right. figured you know the ones that open up like a suitcase yeah and uh as we're walking down the street, he was a little ahead of me. I mean, it was such a long walk to my car. I was going to ask him if he wanted to just sit and have a sandwich before we got to our cars. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, I, I, uh, uh, the tease that I gave before you came on was former teen idol. And, yeah. And I mean that in the most respectful terms, of oh, course. Thanks. Former teen. I mean, you were a pretty young guy. You were uh, the, Your bio says you were 19 when yeah. you really sort of began. I was once 19. I can't, can't remember that, but I was once 19. Yeah, well, I mean, that's like... Uh, that must be an interesting perspective. You've been now in uh, in the business for uh, a really long, uh, fairly long time. Yeah, a real long time. Uh, and to start at 19, I mean, remember 19? I mean, you didn't. I mean, I'm sure you must have been overwhelmed by it all at 19. It, it was interesting because, it, to be honest with you, at that age, what you think mostly about you know you don't think about about the work so much. You think about just having a good time. I I yeah. just had a wonderful time. You know, it's like when you're a kid, everybody takes care of you. When I was that age and under contract at Columbia Pictures, I really didn't have to be concerned with anything because um, Abe Schneider or whoever was the head of Columbia Pictures and, and the executives there, Leo Jaffe and uh, Paul Lazarus and Joy Selznick, they all took care of me. Yeah, I really had nothing to think about. Especially with kids, I would guess they would be. A Especially careful with you guys and watch yeah, after you. Yeah, I mean, there, it was really a whole different business. And when I was married, uh, I, I was quite young. I was about 21, 22. They, they gave my wife and I a honeymoon that was the most incredible thing, which they don't do anymore because it just costs too much money. Mm -hmm. I mean, two weeks in London, two weeks in Italy, two weeks in Denmark, two weeks in France, two weeks in Greece. Uh, two weeks in New York. I mean, that was our honeymoon, and all paid for by Columbia Pictures. Uh -huh. And now, if I want a Coke, it's it's <laughs> tough. <you know? laughs> what, now, what was your your very first film that you did? Uh, it was a movie called Rumble on the Docks, which was uh -huh. made by a man named Sam Katzman, produced by Sam Katzman, uh -huh. who did all the John Wayne, the six day John Wayne movies. And the film that I did was made in I think about eleven days, and. Uh, it was an interesting film, you know. It, it was Bobby Blake who was in the film, Robert Blake. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, in fact, we talk about it. He used to drive me to work every morning. Um, thank God for that because I couldn't find my way or I didn't know my way in the, around uh, California or Hollywood. It was, it was a nice film. You were, you were done, new in um, Hollywood at that point? Oh, absolutely. I had just arrived. My from brother, Philadelphia? From Philly. Ah. I arrived in uh, June. I started the film in July. And uh, my brother John and I uh, were... were fresh into into california when was the last time you saw rumble on the docks i saw well, as a matter of fact i saw bobby blake at a michael jackson concert and we talked about it and i told him i had it on tape and i didn't know i can't remember how i even got it on tape uh -huh. but uh I, I last time i saw it i guess maybe about uh, about eight nine years ago and what was your reaction seeing this 19 year old kid on screen you know, it's interesting. You get it's kind of strange because you look in the mirror and you say, "My, my, my," as the years <laughs> gone by. <laughs> uh, that's that's interesting. Yeah, it's it's interesting to see it for lots of reasons because, of course, you approach as an actor, you approach you approach things differently. The, you know, from one day to the next. So I see it. I see. Gee, I would have done that a little different differently than I than I did then. But uh, I, I think it holds up. The movie holds up. Well, that's that's interesting. You have uh, you have so many facets. 
to uh, to your career. You've done a, a lot of different things, and uh, you've started in film, and then you were mm-hmm. one of those one of those people that made the transition into the music world, and you had lots of big hit records. Um, you, oh, Gidget! I don't want to skip past the film right. days without talking about Gidget. Th- that's uh, actually how I got into the singing thing. You know, really? I used to sing when I was a kid um, before I got into into films, but I never. Um, I never sang professionally. Uh-huh. I, I became an actor first, yeah. and then when I did, when I was asked to do Gidget, which, by the way, the original cast of Gidget was not what you saw. The original cast it was going to be produced by a man named Joe Pasternak, who was a very famous producer. And the original cast was the, the Cliff Robertson part was going to be played by Elvis, yeah. <laughs> and and the and the Sandra D part was going to be played by Debbie Reynolds. And I was doing uh, the the moon doggy part, uh-huh. uh, but that all changed around. But w- there were there were two songs, of course, that I sang in Gidget, and they were going to have somebody dub the voice in because they didn't know that I could sing. And that all started my my singing career as a professional. Oh, how about and that? And I did you know the records and things like that afterwards. And uh, now you made you made a lot of films. Um, oh yeah, I made mean, about twenty, I guess twenty two, yeah. twenty three. And then, uh, now I must say, for some people, you, you probably are best known for uh, for television work. Now, you probably heard this, and you were probably inundated yesterday when you came in. You were on our uh, AM sister station in the uh-huh. afternoon with Joe Niagara. Um, th- these people have come out of the woodwork when I you know, told them that uh, James Darren was coming in, and their eyes got this glazed look. Remarkably similar to a Trekkie sort of a look in their eye, <laughs> and they and they said the words "time tunnel," and yeah. and in fact one of them, Harry, who you probably met yesterday, yeah, walked met up Harry. to my desk and he said these words: Two American scientists are lost in the swirling maze of past and future ages during the first experiments on America's greatest and most secret project, the time tunnel. Tony Newman and Doug Phillips now tumble helplessly toward a new fantastic adventure somewhere along the infinite corridors of time. Ooh. That's really interesting. And he knew it word for word. And just, uh, I, I mean, we had a lot of time tunnel fanatics come out of the woodwork here. It, Granted, they're the stranger people that work at our <laughs> station, but they were so into time tunnel. It's interesting. You know, I've met a lot of people who, who are, they are like kind of Trekkie fans. You were right. Tony Newman. Tony Newman, okay. who never came back to this planet. Um, you know, that was an interesting show. And to be honest with you, it really holds up. I mean, I looked at the film the other day. Someone, as I, I was directing A Hunter, uh-huh. who, which will be on in a about a week or two and uh, one of the extras came to me and he said you know he said I have all the time tunnel shows on tape would you like them I said are you kidding oh, yeah. sure I'd love it you know and then uh, so he, he gave them, he gave them to me I watched a couple minutes of one but it's interesting for me to watch that show I, I know everything that's going on of course behind the scenes that most most people don't see so when you say these guys when what you just played right. these guys tumble through time and so 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 so, so off camera we were standing on a ladder Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> and we would jump off this ladder and roll into the thing. And every time I see it, I say, "We look like two damn fools." <laughs> jump. I mean, I know we jumped off a ladder. Jumping you know? off a ladder. Right? <laughs> no, no, that was real time travel. <laughs> it's interesting because Ro- Robert Colbert, who was the co-star there, uh, one day he jumped off. I mean, I I did it. I had a friend Charlie Paterni who was do a lot of stunts for me, uh-huh. and he would show me how to fall. You know, and I used to like to do stunts and still do. But Bob Colbert was quite big and, and you know, uh, uh, muscular, you know. So he jumped off the ladder one day and he hit his head. Uh-huh. I mean, I thought it was all over. Oh, I thought they were going to put him away for a while. You know, for a series that was on one season, yeah, I mean, it, it had it, tremendous impact. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I remember it. I don't remember it like... They, you know, the people around here who are, you know, la- fanatical. Yeah, our chief engineer Larry Pulaski also incredibly fanatical. He remembers yeah. it. You changed their lives. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's interesting. Now yeah. I remember sitting with my father and seeing that little swirly round thing, and, right. wa- and we watched it all the time together. But I couldn't like recite the opening to you. you know, but, <laughs> Nor could I. But <laughs> that's what I thought. Maybe you know. Uh, we're going to come back in just a second. Here we have uh, the reason James is in here is uh, besides uh, swirling through time, is that he's onto a new venture among the things he's doing. Is he's uh, as I called it yesterday a purveyor of pasta sauces, and uh, we're going to talk about the latest career wrinkle in just a second here at Magic 103 WMGK. It's uh, about three away from eight o'clock at Magic 103 WMGK in Philadelphia. Morning, everybody. Harvey in the morning, and we're uh, talking with our special live guest this morning, James Darren. Uh, we were uh, 
we were up to the time tunnel uh, yeah. here, and they're just uh, reminiscing. And uh, uh, you ended up uh, coming on at the, the exact same. That was the same year that Star Trek first right. hit the networks, and you were opposite and not direct competitor, but opposite uh, man. You ended up working with later on uh, T.J. Hooker with William Shatner. Yeah, right. Uh, was uh, uh, Hooker was that fun to do? Was that, that, it was a lot of fun to do. Yeah. I mean, I was the lucky one of the group because um, it was Bill Shatner and Adrian's Med, of course, and then Heather Locklear was was uh, in the precinct as as a, a, a desk officer. And a perfectly believable casting. Yes, perfectly. Right? Yes, <laughs> of course. Uh, the only 13-year-old desk officer I know. <laughs> and uh, then they said, you know, I mean, she was getting more and more popular, and uh, uh, they, they needed a partner for her. Uh -huh. So uh, Rick Husky, who's a Philadelphian also, who created that show, said, Jimmy, would you like to come in and you know, maybe do a show, and maybe this could work out? And I said, sure. So I was a lucky guy. See, I got Heather Locklear as a, as a, as a partner. And uh, Bill had Adrian, so I mean, <laughs> he wasn't too lucky, you know, <laughs> not for Bill, and, or, or nor for, or for Adrian, for that matter. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it was it was kind of fun for me, you know. Occasionally, yeah. I'd be able to pull down an alley, and Heather and I could neck for an hour or two. You know? <laughs> uh, but, Sounds like uh, a tough life so far. It, it you was know? it was murderous. It was really. I mean, we had a lot of fun doing that show. I must say, the people were great to work with. The crew was incredible. The, the the production staff was was great, and the, of course the cast was wonderful. I I, I love Heather. Yeah, I mean it must be fun to work on a show like that. That is, you know, one of those, you know, action. Crime it's fun cop shows. when people get to get, when people get along. Yeah. But if they don't, trust me. I mean, no matter yeah. how good the show looks, when the, when it's rough, when there's a conflict all the time, it's murders. But we had a real good time, and uh, I, I do I do miss that show. Who's uh, who's the uh, we'll get to the pasta sauce in just a second. But who's the biggest jerk that you've ever worked with? Uh, Bill Shatner. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> no, <laughs> see, he's not a jerk at all. I'm only kidding. Uh, the biggest jerk I ever worked with. Um, know, I like this inside. Do you know? Stuff. I really, I swear to you, I've not worked with any, uh, with any jerks. Really? I mean it. Yeah. I mean it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean myself. I've been a jerk sometimes, and I'd say, boy, I'd say, you know, you're a jerk this morning. But uh, I have not worked with any people that are that are really, uh, really prima donnas or jerks, which is interesting. I, mean, I work with some great people like, uh, like uh, Gregory Peck and David Niven and Anthony Quinn. And yeah, yeah. You're, uh, yeah. The list of people that you've been in films and other projects and stuff, and uh, yeah, it's I mean, amazing. And now you're now you're directing, and now you're mm -hmm. control uh, and more. Control. You know that's interesting. Now I look at it as a director. Yeah. And sometimes I work with an actor, um, who actors who shall remain <laughs> nameless because I want to work again. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. But but some of those actors, and they're, they're not jerks by any mean any means, but they are. When you look, when you do it from a director's standpoint. Sometimes you'll ask an actor to do certain things, and he really won't want, or she won't want to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, but the only advantage I have is that I am an actor, and they trust me more than they would trust other directors. Right, because you've been there. Yeah, I tell them, I say, you know, I would never do anything to, to make you look bad. And I wouldn't, of course. I mean, that, mm -hmm. that's the last thing I do. Now... What's the deal with the pasta sauce, James? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, we're out of time. No time for the plug -a Thanks for getting up at an ungodly hour and being on the show. See you, bye. No, no, now the payoff. We're, going, we're talking well, about your pasta sauce here. I tell you, I, I've been... I've been my, that's my grandma's recipe and then and, and given to my mom. And Now, if I, would, yeah, if I was to say to you, hey, what is a, you know, a white bread metagon kid like James <laughs> Darren, what kind of name is that for pasta sauce? You would then say to me... I, I'm Italian. Ercolani. Ercolani, right. Yeah, right. It's interesting because lots of people think I'm Irish. They think I'm black Irish. And, uh, I mean, with a name like Darren, I would think so, yeah. too. But Ercolani is my, my real name, and I'm, I'm full-blooded Italian. Yeah. Uh, American Italian. 100% natural, no preservatives. No preservatives. That's absolutely. good stuff. Good. I, absolutely. I, I don't, you don't need preservatives. That thing will last years in the jar, just the way it is. Yeah. I mean, my grandmother used to jar it, and, I mean, she'd have it down in the basement for five years, for God's sake. The, the fresh tomatoes and things. But I, I did it because people, I'd serve it at my house. My wife would make it, you know, after my mom showed her how to make it. <laughs> yeah. Of course, the correct way. <laughs> uh, oh, my, a good time. She, she would make it and everybody would love it, you know. And so she started jarring it and giving it to, to different people, different friends. Uh -huh. And they said, why don't you put it on the market? I mean, Paul Newman did yeah, it. Yeah, right. And Jimmy, Jimmy Dean, you know, has, has uh -huh. a very successful business. So I, about three years ago, I got into it and it took me all that time to finally get to this point where I have it jarred and, and on the market and at the markets. In the stores now? People it, could... In the stores, absolutely. 
absolutely. Cook all the all the all the major markets. All right. Acme uh, and Gennardi's and Clemens and places like that. Okay. You know? Now I, I must. I would like to like add my own personal uh, endorsement and rave uh, about this, but you see, you will hate me. I mean, I'm allergic to garlic. Are you really? I really am. I can't eat garlic at all. I'm a pain to go to a restaurant with because I have to send the waiter back into the kitchen a hundred times checking on everything. I'm allergic to garlic. And look at the words right there. Basil, garlic. Garlic. <laughs> I'll, bet, I'll bet it's in there and it should it's, be in there. It's in there, yeah, Don't make it for me. You make it for everybody else. So I haven't eat, eaten it, but I understand. That, that's got to be That's got to be terrible to be allergic to garlic. Well, it is. It's a it's a problem yeah, in a because, restaurant. Yes, yeah, of course. It's a problem going neighbors. over to friends' houses for dinner. They all go, sure. oh, geez, Harvey's yeah. coming over. We're going to eat so boring. Today. Pull out the cream of wheat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah, that's my my father has uh, lived on for uh, fifty years. There is cream of wheat. Uh, Eight oh three at Magic One Oh Three WMGK. Are you going to be uh, uh, doing taste tests and stuff? I uh, sure. The area? Yeah, I'm going to be at. Uh, uh, tell us where. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, on, on Friday, I'm going to be at uh, uh, New Britain Clemens and uh, in Lansdale at Ralph's Corner. Uh, Clemens Market, and then yeah. uh, Maple Glen, Gennardi's, and this is all Friday, and um, <laughs> uh, a fun Germantown day. Pike, Gennardi's, and uh, oh, a whole bunch of places. I'm going to be there all day. Fr from Friday on, for the next two weeks, I'll be doing taste testings at, at the Acme's, the Gennardi's, the Clemens Markets, and uh, Super Fresh. Great. Can we give some away? To, uh, Absolutely. Uh, sure. Uh, Let's uh, give a couple cases away. All right. We'll do that. We'll take a couple of calls here at 664-2000 in Jersey, 963-4280. They can test it, even if I can't test it. No sense not letting the folks do it. Uh, a lot of luck with the uh, with the pasta Thank sauce you. here. It it's delicious. It's it's really made with all... If you notice, the ingredients are all great ingredients. They're all fresh, wonderful ingredients. There's no none, none of that soybean oil and junk like that. In right. the, I wouldn't do it, nor would my grandmother, of course. She'd beat the heck out of me. Yeah, all right. <laughs> it's, uh, it's in the wonderful little jar with James Darren's picture right on the middle there. It's funny. I, you know, I... I like, talked to Bobby Rydell. I said, "Guess what?" I said, "I have this pasta sauce, so and so." So, I said, "And and uh, and a, a picture on the on on the front." He said, "Whose picture?" I said, "Yours." <laughs> <laughs> James, thanks a lot, and uh, best of luck with all your new projects. Thank too. you. It was a pleasure. Magic one hundred three WMGK at eight oh four. We're going to come back with news after this.